Hey guys, my name is Alexis Young and I did my senior seminar research paper on Holocaust denial and anti-Semitism. chose this topic because I like to study World War II, specifically the Holocaust, and Holocaust denial has also interested me a lot because I can't understand why someone would deny the Holocaust. So I'll start off by giving my research question, which was why are these individuals so certain of their claims against the Holocaust despite all the evidence working against them? My thesis statement is because they were so deeply rooted in their anti-Semitic beliefs that they believed that the Jews simply constructed the entire thing to get sympathy from the rest of the world. Obviously, we know about the Holocaust and the horrible things that happened during it and that there is so much evidence support supporting those things that happened. A movement called historical revisionism was present before Holocaust denial ever became a thing and ultimately gave shape to the denial movement. Historical revisionism is the reinterpretation of a historical account, time span, or phenomenon where they challenge orthodox views that were held by professional historians. These interpretations tend to involve contradictory evidence that go against the decisions of the people involved in that specific historical account. Unlike Holocaust denial, historical revisionism is quite common and not very controversial. Going back to the point I made about revisionism giving shape to denial, revisionists began challenging World War II, saying that Germany did not want to go in the war, want to go to war in the first place, and eventually opposing the Nuremberg trials, saying they were unfair and biased. According to Michael Shermer and Alex Grodman, the authors of Denying History explained that historians had challenged Germany's responsibility for the war by arguing that world Jewry <clears throat> had declared war on Germany in 1933, and the Nazis, who were the ruling party of the nation at the time, had simply reacted to the threat. On the report of new evidence that had surfaced recently, the first person to ever deny the Holocaust was Alexander Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe was the leader of the Scottish and British Protestant League, as well as an elected counselor of Glasgow, Scotland in 1933. During his time as counselor, he published a magazine called Vanguard in 1945, where he claimed multiple times that the Holocaust was just an invention made up by the Jews. He also argued against the concentration camps, saying that the newsreel footage that was captured of the camps were the invention of the Jewish mind and that the footage was faked in Jewish cinemas. However, his arguments were never supported by any factual evidence. Across different authors, the most influential denier was Paul Rassiner. They also called him the father of Holocaust denial. He did not prefer to call himself a denier, but he re preferred to call himself a revisionist. Paul Rassiner was a French communist who later became a French socialist and joined the French resistance during the war. In 1943, he was arrested for smuggling Jews into Switzerland by the Gestapo, which was the secret police force in Nazi Germany and Nazi-occupied Europe. While after he was arrested, he was sent to concentration camps, such as Dora, where he spent the remainder of the war. While he was in these concentration camps, he was able to personally experience the conditions, which later helped him argue against the claims of other camp survivors. Once the war ended, he began listening to other survivor stories and would point out the inaccuracies about the conditions and treatments in the camps. He also gave blame to the Capos for the suffering that he experienced while in the camps, arguing that they were acting on their own accord and not because of any orders that came from above. Lastly, he used any inconsistency from eyewitness accounts and his personal experiences in order to cast doubt among the Nazis' intention to kill the Jews and the actual number of Jews that were killed deliberately. In 1949, he published a book in French that I cannot pronounce at all, which was then translated into English in 1967. This book was, is highly promoted around the world by neo-Nazis and Holocaust deniers. Another important denier was Maurice Bardèche, who was also French. While Rassinier focused on arguing the treatment and conditions of the prisoners in the camps, Bardesh's arguments mainly focused on the initial killing of the Jews. He argued that yes, a large number of them of the Jews were killed in these camps during the Holocaust, but they were not intentionally murdered. 
Instead, he said that the ho- the Jews that died during the Holocaust were killed by war-related events that had ultimately entered into the camps. According to Manfred Gerstenfeld, Bardesch also argued that when the Germans talked about the final solution of the Jewish problem, that they were talking about taking the Jews from their homes and transferring them to specific Jewish ghettos in Eastern Europe, Europe, not any type of extermination. He also argued that gas chambers were used to disinfect the prisoners of any disease or chemicals not to kill them. In 1978, Willis Carto, who was a far-right political activist, founded and organized the Institute for Historical Review. Before founding the Institute, he was also the founder and head of the anti-Semitic Liberty Lobby organization that was based in Washington, D.C. When the Institute for Historical Review had just begun, they were known as historical revisionists, but this was soon, would soon change. They soon became known for their numerous works that they published in the Journal of Historical Review, as well as many books that openly supported Holocaust denial, anti-Semitism, and neo-Nazi ideologies. A, few, a year after the Institute was founded, they held their first annual conference, which attracted many Holocaust deniers from around the world. At this conference, the Institute promised $50,000 to anyone that could prove to them that the Jews were gassed at Auschwitz. The proof they needed required specific names, dates, locations, documents such as diaries, photographs, and film, and also forensic evidence from the victims. Mel Mermelstein took up this offer. He was a Holocaust survivor and brought his eyewitness testimony as long as, as well as other eyewitness testimonies. But he had to go to court with the Institute in order to get this money. He, they went to court in October 1981, and there the Judge Johnson took judicial notice that the Jews were truly gassed, and Mermel Stein was awarded his $50,000 along with 40 extra $40,000 extra dollars for personal suffering. One of the most well-known Holocaust deniers is a British individual by the name of David Irving. He wasn't a member of the Institute, but he did attend several of their conferences and had had given lectures with them. In the beginning, he didn't say he didn't claim as to be a denier because he did in fact believe it happened, but he did not believe that Hitler had given the order to exterminate all Jews. So now that I've talked about Holocaust and now, I'm going to give you some information on the history of anti-Semitism. So putting it in simple terms, anti-Semitism is the hatred or prejudice against Jews. It's very difficult to pinpoint the exact origin date of this ideology. Norman Cohn explains in his book, Warrant for Genocide, that the hatred of Jews dates back to between the 2nd and 4th centuries after Christ was born, where the church and the synagogue were competing for converts in the Hellenistic world. St. Augustine, who was a 4th century philosopher, described the Jews as the, those who had been the favorite sons of God, who were then transformed into the sons of Satan. Also, St. John who was the Archbishop of Constantinople and an important early church father, called the synagogues the Temple of Demons and the Cavern of Devils. In A Convenient Hatred, Phyllis Goldstein explains the several issues between the Jews and the Egyptians. The Egyptians worshipped several godlike figures, while Jews only worshipped one single god. In 400 BCE, the Egyptians wanted to rid their lands of the Persian conquerors, and the Jews that had been working for them. So they burnt down a Jewish temple, causing the Jews to fight back and killing several Egyptians, which ultimately started the hatred between the two that would carry out throughout the centuries. In Alexandria, the Jews that resided there after the Romans conquered it had several rights, such as the practice, the right to practice their own religion and was even given a degree of self-governance as a separate ethnic group. However, the Egyptians that also resided there did not receive the same rights, furthering the hatred between the two. Appian, a Greek lawyer, claimed that the Jews were a diseased race and that they were godless people who worshipped the head of an ass in their temple in Jerusalem. 
Walter LeClear explained in his book, The Changing Face of Antisemitism, that Jesus Christ simply wanted to just change Judaism, not to create an entire new religion. As new generations of Christians emerge, also new interpretations do as well. For example, some Christians believe that God had rejected the people he had originally selected and that the Jews had sinned and fallen. As Christianity began to take over, the hatred towards Jews got worse. The Byzantine Emperor Justinian I prohibited the reading of the Bible in Hebrew, prohibited the building of, building of synagogues, and would not allow Jews to assemble in public. Pope Leo III of Italy outlawed Judaism and then exiled all Jews from Italy in 855. In, in 1347, trading ships left one port and arrived in Sicily carrying individuals who had a, an unknown plague. The plague quickly spread throughout the cities and towns, and Christians, Jews, and Muslims believed that this was a punishment sent from God. The Christians soon began to shift the belief to the Jews, saying that they had previously poisoned the wells and that this was enough evidence to believe that they were the ones who started the plague. A small town in France officially began to blame the Jews, saying that they spread it through poisoning of wells. As a result, every Jew that resided in that town were arrested, their property was confiscated, and they were tortured until they confessed to the crime they committed. In 1902, a Russian journalist by the name of Michael Minsikov spoke about the existence of a thick document that told of a secret con conspiracy against humanity. This document became known as the Protocols of the Elders of Zion and is widely known throughout the Holocaust denial movement. Norman Cohn explained that the protocols were a series of lectures in which a member of the secret Jewish government, the Elders of Zion, expounds a plot to achieve world domination. During World War II, the Nazis used the protocols as propaganda against the Jews, trying to prove that they were taking over the world and that's why they were attacking. As a result, the protocols became very popular among the Germans, especially the far right in 1870 because it emerged as a political force in Germany. It made it easier for the Germans to blame the World War on the and the fact that Germany was losing on the Jews and consequently punished them during the Holocaust. Hitler had taken interest in anti-Semitism ever since it became popular in Vienna in the early 1900s. His beliefs obviously became more extreme as the years went on, especially when he rose to power as Chancellor in 1933. Did the Holocaust deniers try to say that Hitler did not explicitly order any of his men to exterminate the Jews due to the lack of any signed document saying so? However, Walter Lequeur explains that on January 30th, 1939, Hitler gave a speech to the Reichstag where he said, in the event of another war, the Jewish race in Europe would be exterminated. After the World War II ended and the Holocaust ended, anti-Semitism still seemed to rise. And overall, the link between Holocaust denial and anti-Semitism is very clear because those who are denying it obviously have a base in anti-Semitism as their reason behind the claims that they make. Thank you.